In preparation of our message today, I would like to bring forth the ministry of the word through Psalm 23rd, a psalm that is very familiar to most of us, that we probably learned as, as children. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Thank you for the hearing and the blessing of our word. Psalm 23. When I was asked to be part of this Laity Sunday, I was like, sure, that'll be great. And then I started thinking, what am I going to talk about? Thank goodness Mark sent me a little message, and he gave me a few ideas. He goes, well, how about this? Or how about the first Bible verse or your favorite Bible verse? And I was like, well, it's not my favorite. It's not my first, but it's one of the early ones that I learned. A little while ago, I think I was third or fourth grade, Sunday school, our teachers had a contest. And if you want to get me involved, tell me I can earn something. So that's what I was going to do. You'll learn a Bible verse. She had a whole stack of cards that had those Bible verses and X number of points, and we could earn a Bible. Great. I'm going to go for it. My first verse... John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus wept. <laughs> yes, you knew it. One point, I was on the board and I was ready to go. And then I looked at that board and the other kids were earning a few more points. It's like, this isn't going to work. I need something with a few more points. I got to do this a little quicker. Learning those books of the Bible was going to take me a little while. But that 23rd Psalm was 15 points. I remember that. 15 points for that 23rd Psalm. So it's the second Bible verse that I learned. I'm not sure I knew and understood it, but it was the second one I learned, and that's where I figured I would start today. But it's not just about a shepherd and our shepherd. I'm going to take a look at this story or at this Psalm, the Psalm of David, from the perspective of a sheep. It's a little bit different. And there's a little more to it. And I've learned a whole lot about sheep. And you know what? Those shepherds are not quite just the gentlemen and the boys out in that field tending to a bunch of animals. There's a lot more that goes on to it. So let me start. I had to write it down. I have to keep my notes here um, because I'll forget where I am with the verses. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for anything. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There's four things a sheep needs. A sheep needs to be free of fear, because they're timid little creatures. Mm -hmm. A sheep needs to be free of friction, just like us, that agitation within the herd. They need to be free of pests, that'll come later, and free of hunger. Those four things have to be met, and that sheep is going to be happy. And that shepherd knows that. If they're constantly stirred up, they're not going to thrive. The sheep won't lie down. That sheep has the best shepherd they could have. 
He's going to make them lie down because all of those needs are going to be met, every single one of them. His name's sake. Now, this is a little bit of the shepherd. That shepherd has only his name. That's it. If he has a good flock of sheep, his name is known as the best shepherd for his name's sake. Just like when we were born, you received that name. It reminds me of a poem. My brother got a plaque when he was little, and it said, you got it from your father. It was all he had to give. Use it and cherish it. Do not tarnish it, because that's what you will give. It's his name. It's that shepherd. And if he took care of those sheep, those sheep were going to thrive. And we know that that's what the shepherd did. The Lord is my shepherd. We have happy sheep. So next, we come to a valley. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I learned this in that King James Version, so I have all of these and thous in, in my copy here. That valley of the shadow of death, it's an actual place. Did you know that? There is an actual place. It's a valley. Think about farming and what we, what we know today. It does apply to what was back then. The shepherds started at a home base. And in the fall and in the winter, they were in this one home base, but they had to move those sheep. Just like any animal, you can't overgraze that land, okay? So they had to move those sheep. But in order to get to the next area, they had to go through this valley. So it's actually located parallel to the Jordan River. And this is just from the research that I have done. It's south of Jericho. It's part of the desert. But they're moving from that base in that fall and winter time to the spring and summer to something a little cooler. And we all know if you're down in the valleys and it gets warm in the summer, you move up to the higher elevations, it gets a little cooler. So they were going to take those sheep and they were going to move. But they've got to go through this valley. The shadow of death comes from the fact that those were places where thieves and pirates and bad things could happen. Those folks would hide. They could harm the animals. They could push the animals off. The climbs were steep. You're going up to a higher elevation. So it's a valley that's full of some threats that are possible. But that last two lines, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Strange things to be comfortable with, but they do. Now, we all know what that staff is. It's that great little thing with a hook on the end, our candy canes, and the shepherds wear it, and the little boys hold that in the Christmas plays, and the little girls hold it because they're the shepherds in the Christmas plays. But what else does it do? It provides a hook if they need to get those little lambs. If they've fallen into those crevices, they can bring those sheep back. It's getting that lost lamb, bringing it back into the fold. The shepherd's hook can bring all the animals together. That shepherd's hook is going to guide as well. So there's many purposes with that shepherd's hook that they're going to use. Use it for direction. Use it to guide. Use it to safety. Then we come to the rod. There's another piece of equipment. Now, it's not just one shepherd, usually, that's out in the field. You have young trainer, training shepherds, shepherds at apprentice, the youngsters that are going to be doing this type of work, and they're going to learn it. So that rod is something that they're going to use. Where do they get it? What is it? Well, the rod is actually a little sapling. 
And as a young shepherd, they're going to pull that sapling out, and they're going to start and carve it and whittle it and mold it, and it's going to become part of them. And they're going to learn how to use it, just like the tennis player is going to use a racket, just like the baseball player learns to hit that ball. They have this rod. That rod can be used in many ways. They can throw it and wake somebody up. They can make those sheep move. They're going into an area I don't want them. They're going to throw it. They see some danger coming, and they can throw it at the wolf, at the fox, at something that's going to harm those sheep. So they can toss that rod, and it's going to make everything scatter. It's going to protect those sheep. The rod and the staff, they comfort me. Have you ever heard of passing under the rod? There's a term that's used, you pass under the rod. As the sheep are gathered together, and it may be more than one flock, there's a lot of sheep, and the shepherd's got to check those sheep as they're either coming back to their home base or they're leaving and they're headed out to the next area. Those sheep pass under that rod. And I kind of picture it in my mind. You can picture it any way you want. But we have kind of an area where their sheep are going to be kind of guided through. And the shepherd's going to be able to stop. And they're going to hold that rod over them. So they're going to take a look at that sheep. With that staff, they can pull back the hair, pull back the wool. Take a look and see if there's parasites in there. Take a look and see what the skin looks like. Are they healthy? Remember, the Lord is my shepherd. He's taking care of me. He's going to make sure I'm healthy. I have everything that I need. And he knows I'm going to do well. He passes under that rod. And that shepherd is going to be able to check that sheep. Use that staff. Pull back that wool. See what kind of crimp it is. Is the animal getting the food and water that it needs? We've heard it. You pass under the rod. Another thing that they'll do with that staff and with that rod is comfort. I've seen a couple holding hands. That staff, the shepherd will use and put it against a sheep. You've had pets. You've had special moments. They like to be there. It's touch. We all like it. It makes us feel loved. It makes us feel connected. And that shepherd would use that rod and use that staff to touch that sheep. You're special to me. I care for you. That rod and that staff, they're going to comfort me. So we've gotten through the valley, or we're headed through the valley. Before they get to the valley, though, usually what happens is a shepherd or two or three, whatever it is, they go on ahead. Now, this may be they've got some of the animals, they're still at the base, they're still at the home camp, they haven't quite moved all the way through, but a shepherd is going to go ahead of the others. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. The shepherd needs to go out to that area. Did you know there was also a place called a tableland? It's those plateaus. They exist. It's the tableland. And that's where these sheep are headed. And that's where that shepherd's going to bring them. But they haven't been there for a year or since the last season, whatever amount of time. So they need to get that ready. They need to pull out the weeds. They need to clean out those springs. They need to dam up that water because the sheep don't like running water. They're timid, remember? They've got to have something that's going to be calm for them to drink from. They can put their head right in and drink to their full. 
Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, what would be the enemies? What do you think the sheep have got? The fox, the wolves, those types of animals. There is also a burrowing snake. It's an asp, A-S-P, and it burrows down. And one of the things the shepherd would do would pour whatever it is, a repellent, around those asps, dens, holes in the ground. They're going to fill those holes so the sheep don't break their legs. They're going to cover or put that oil or whatever it is around those holes so that the ass, that snake, doesn't come out and doesn't bite their venomous and kill the sheep. Thou anointest my head with oil. A pest. And if you remember back in the beginning, that sheep has to be free from those pests. So we're getting rid of those snakes that are there. There's another pest, and what's it called? Nasal fly. I knew it was an ugly name. Nasal fly. And they buzz around the head, and at certain times, the shepherd will see that it's, the sheep are getting agitated and they're just not happy. They're going to anoint that head of that sheep so that those flies don't go into the nasal cavity up the sheep's nose, so to speak, and cause this irritation. And this irritation, it, they lay the eggs, it itches, it buzzes, and it's a life cycle. Well, what will happen is that it, that sheep is so irritated, it's going to run into the brush. It, will run into a wall, it'll run into a tree, it, it'll run over a cliff just to stop that incessant itching, noise, feeling that just isn't going to stop. So to prevent it, they will put that ointment. It's just like you and I putting on that bug spray. We may not be able to get rid of all those no but most of the time we can get the mosquitoes and keep those away. So they're going to protect that sheep by putting something on its head to keep those flies away. That sheep is no longer agitated, it's no longer irritated, and it can continue to thrive. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, lots of us think about the shepherd leading the sheep. And in some cases, the shepherd does lead the sheep. When there are many different types of sheep together from many different flocks, the shepherd is going to call to his sheep. And those sheep will follow him because we all know that sheep knows their name. Just like your kids know your voice, those sheep know that shepherd's name. And those sheep are going to follow that shepherd. So he's now got them and removed them from the larger group. But the shepherd's going to guide them. He's going to be behind. That's what that staff, that's what that rod is. He's watching out. He's overseeing, he's looking at those sheep. Like I did when I was a lifeguard. I'd stand there and I'm watching. I'm not looking behind me, I'm looking in front of me. The shepherd is watching. Goodness and mercy is going to be right behind me every single day of my life. And we've gone through the valley, we've come to the tableland. The seasons have turned. We'll go back through the valley. We'll come back to that home base. I'm going to dwell in the Lord's house forever and ever. Goodness and mercy followed me, guided me, brought me through those valleys, and I have a home with the Lord forever. Amen.